uh, China will remind British action to meet the climate targets that they have. We keep going lower to the coal charts. Uh, China continues to rely heavily on coal, which is what you just talked about, energy consumption in China by source. You see where they're at. Look at that. The, from 65 till today, yeah. what it looks like, which is insane. And then Xi on the bottom makes a, uh, a prediction about what they're going to do with coal. Go a little lower right there. Make it a little bit bigger. President Xi says China will face down coal use from 2026 and will not build new coal-fired project abroad. But some governments and uh, campaigners say the plans are not going far enough. Research is at uh, Tsinghua uh, uh, University in Beijing say China will need to stop using coal entirely for generating electricity by 2050 to be replaced by nuclear and renewable energy production. So, okay, so that's this part. Now, on, on, can you pull up the other two charts that Musk put up, the two pictures? So here's what Musk was explaining, and I want to really kind of get your feeling on this. What does this mean to the average person that's watching this? So here is what CO2 looks like from 1960 to right. 2015, right? And this is part of the speech that Musk gave. You look at this, some the average person is going to be like, well, Pat, that's not really a big deal. But when you zoom out and you look at it from 1,000, till 2015, that's what it looks like, okay, how this has grown in that time period. So this, anybody that looks at this will say this is deeply concerning on the growth that we had from whatever, 1950s okay. till today. Can you unpack this, please? Yes. Uh, do you want to go to my PowerPoint? Beginning of my PowerPoint, I actually have this same chart, I think, from Al Gore's movie, basically. Uh, go, uh, keep, keep going, keep going, keep going, right there. Zoom in on that. That's basically the same chart. The second yellow, where Al Gore is, is where his projections are. But I believe the chart you just showed is where that first yellow dot is. That's what Eon, that looks intimidating. Couple things there. That's ice core data from Antarctica, and it's CO2 and temperature. The red is the CO2. But what Gore doesn't mention is that the temperature leads the CO2. So as the temperature goes up, the oceans emit more CO2. He makes you think that CO2 then drives the temperature. That's point one which is a technical point, and even his producer in a children's book reversed that and said that te you know, CO2 leads temperature when it's the reverse. Now go to the next slide. And that's if you look back further in the geologic record. There, there you're going back uh, you know, millions of years. That's Al Gore's high point, and this is a key point here, and this is in, uh, but when you talk to us- How many years back is this? This is going back five, 700 million years or so, I believe that. Who gets yeah. data from 700 million years ago? How do you do that? Uh, it's based on all sorts of, uh, you know, basically uh, data from everything from sediments, lake bed, rocks. Um, People have a hard time believing a book uh, came out 2,000 years ago called right. the Bible and Jesus, let alone yeah, 700 million it, years ago. It, it, they could be off on the year. I don't even know if they are off on the year. They're pretty confident in it, but that's a different argument. You know, you're talking about young Earth creatures. I wonder if they use Excel back in the days. Like no, <laughs> but here's the key. 90% of Earth's geologic history had CO2 levels uh, higher than today, and 90% of Earth's geologic history was warmer than today. We're in the 10% coldest, 10% lowest CO2. We're actually, we've had scientists testify to Congress that we are in a CO2 famine. So if you look at it, the Earth has been, 90% of the history has been too warm to have ice at either pole. We're in the 10% coldest part. So what Gore is showing you is a little snippet of Earth's geologic history. Uh, now go to the next slide. What do I have? I think... This is according to NOAA. This is an actual chart in the Biden administration's up, up on their website showing Earth's history much hotter than today. And this is a quote from the NOAA website. Past temperatures much too warm for ice sheets or perennials. Exactly what I'm saying. And they go back 500 million years. Now, you could argue about that. And, you know, but that, you know, if you're going to accept the other science, you got you know, to look at this. I agree. And you, I see agree. The, you see the blue chart. That's today. That's an idea. Now, if you go again, I think I have the UN chart, but I don't know that I do. Yes. This was in the first United Nations report in 1990. Look at the medieval warm period. Showed it as warmer than today. This is important because this is what Elon Musk is using and what you brought up. We had a scientist named David Deming, University of Oklahoma, come testify before the United States Senate Environment Committee in that after that 1990 UN report, which this chart was featured in, mm -hmm. the IPCC, Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, the gold standard, if you will, that the UN scientists started an email campaign and started contacting, we have to get rid of the medieval warm period. Why would a climate activist scientist chosen to work with the United Nations want to get rid of the medieval warm period? Well, because if current temperatures are not as warm as the medieval warm period, it's hard to scare the public about it. So that led to the whole creation of the hockey stick, which was done by Penn State professor Michael Mann, who just recently moved to University of Pennsylvania, which was called statistical rubbish. He went through and used uh, 
all sorts of proxy data for climate, and he smoothed out the medieval warm period. He smoothed out the, this is just the northern hemisphere because we don't have real good data for the southern hemisphere. But he smoothed out the uh, Little Ice Age, and he made a hockey stick, meaning the 20th century showed this great big temperature. These are temperatures, not CO2. This chart. This was critical because people need to know that when originally the UN report. The science hasn't changed in the past. You could argue our understanding of it, but then you get into what they did, the lobbying campaign. The professors received an email saying, we have to get rid of the medieval warm period. Lo and behold, they got rid of it a few years later with a very controversial chart that has been roundly attacked, even by people who believe in a climate, you know, uh, climate is a huge problem, discredit it. And even Man Michael Mann's own colleagues in the UN uh, climate gate emails revealed it. So go to the next thing. I don't know if I have any other chart here. Yeah, actually, this is another, this is a chart exaggerating trend. Global temperatures in 1880. We always hear, this is done by the Greenpeace co-founder, Patrick Moore, who's now a big climate dissenter, if you will. But that's showing you the, the global temperature. And I believe that's, you know, tenths or half a degree the key here is when they claim that things have gone skyrocketing or unprecedented, the hottest year on record, the hottest decade, it's within tens, hundreds of a degree, not even measurable. It's within the margin of error, within the margin that they adjust the temperatures. It's a fancy way for them to say, you know, 2006 is the hottest year on record, but it's not statistically different from 2005 or, two, or even sometimes it was 1998. So essentially it turns into the last 25 years – we haven't had since late 90s, we had very little warming. But then if you go back to the 1970s where they start a lot of the baselines, we've had a lot more warming because that was a little ice age. If you keep going, I believe I have an EPA chart. Just one other point on since we're doing charts. Keep going a little faster. Uh, more and more. Uh, keep going. You'll see a, you'll see a temperature chart. Uh, that's tipping point. Well, well, that's a, actually, let's well, stop there. That's a good one there. This is, I'll, I'll stop here. This is a CO2 chart that shows you since 1960, the same chart, but here's the other thing, and this is what I focus on. These are UN meetings, the UN Earth Summit, 1992, you see Rio, Berlin, there's Kyoto, 1997. If you go up, you can see Paris, that's 2015. You can see the lockdown. Everything they've talked about, everything they've tried has failed to reduce CO2 emissions. It's all window dressing. It's a fancy way of saying we need to convert to a technocratic socialist system in order to control the climate because this you know, because capitalism will destroy the environment. But nothing they've done or attempted to do has had any impact. And Roy Spencer, a climatologist formerly with NASA, said it would take about a 50% reduction in CO2 total emissions for at least a year or more to actually make a dent. So if you like this clip and you want to watch another one, click right here. And if you want to watch the entire podcast, click right here.